Um, okay. So where are you based right now and what do you do? Sure. So I am based in Florida. I'm on in Northeast. So I'm about not far from Orlando, about an hour away from Orlando, but east next to the beach. And I'm the founder of Dear God to Be There Yet, which is a peer-to-peer volunteer travel community. And we change lives one conversation at a time through uh, time-shared experiences. And then right now we have virtual opportunities so that people can still help from the comfort of their home because of everything with coronavirus. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And so before quarantine and before COVID, uh, the first big talk question is, how are you really doing before everything hit? Oh, I was on a roller coaster because we were just launching the community into this aspect. We've been having the podcast for about three years and we were just launching the community. And so we were just like, we were on this energy, like just flying by we were planning our first volunteer travel trip to my homeland um, Dominican Republic so that was super exciting because I was a lot of people have never been and they also wanted to help hands-on and so and then it was just an energy rush of like amazingness January came and we're like yeah we got this um and some speaking opportunities to get the community out we're all booked and it was it was great and then corona hit and so we had to change gears really really quickly and we had to think about people and I think that's the number one thing that in our, my whole vision is always putting people first. And so I think we had to just go back to the basics. Um, yeah. So once COVID hit, what were some of like the hardest moments for you? Just kind of like the lowest lows. I think it had to do with the uncertainty. I'm a mom, I'm a new mom. And every little thing you don't know, I mean, you, you have a baby and you don't know from a regular flu. So imagine something so large and also just uncertainty about, you know, the economy. And it kind of gave, got me into a little funk in the sense of like, am I going, if I'm going to worry, is it going to control my stress? And is it going to put me back into my thoughts and my, is my baby going to feel that energy? And so I had to quickly like tell myself, like she can feel everything I feel. So if I'm like running around like a hot mess and like, Ugh, she's going to be like, why is mommy like, and, she, and, and she'll probably lash out and crying. So I always had that in my mind that like, whatever I was going through, she can feel it. She's such, she's so young, but uncertainty because health is something that you can't, I mean, you can only control so much, but you can't control everything, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I read that babies can really feed off their mother's energy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I'm talking about if I'm stressed and I have, like, a phone call and I have this and I'm supposed to do that, she can tell, like, and she will feel like it's her fault. And, and she's only, like, a year. She'll be a year next, next week. That's like, so she cute. Can feel it. <laughs> yeah, she is. And she can feel it. She'll get like anxious and she'll start crying. And, and it's, and I didn't believe it, but it's very true. Your energy is so important and, and mm -hmm. animals feel it too, you know? So, yeah. yeah. Well, on the other hand, what were some of the best parts about quarantine and just this time period? Best moments? Um, redefining relationships, all types of relationships. I think that we, we live in a world where we say we don't have enough time. And I think that like rolls off our tongue so easily. Like, I don't have time to call this person. I don't have time to go out with this person. I don't have time. And it's like, you have to be conscious of your time. Like, you know what? I miss that person. I miss my friends. I mean, we, there is a way. And I think it's getting creative and it's meeting people in different ways that you probably would have never met them if you were just, you know, going down the street. I mean, it's getting creative, innovative, and redefining all the types of relationships, not just your online ones, but what matters to you and what focus the relationship you have with yourself, because you can't go nowhere. You can't go shopping. You can't do anything. You can't even travel, um, which is something we love to do. So that is, was a huge one is just redefining what our new normal per se is, you know? Totally. Um, sorry, the clicking sound is kind of coming back. Oh. Sorry. Okay, I know what it was. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. I just don't want to miss anything you're saying. Um, okay. um, let's see. I mean, you've kind of already talked about this a little bit, but kind of what life lessons do you feel like you learned during this time that you would take with you even after quarantine? Oh, life is not promised in so many ways. And we're not just talking about death 
we're not, I'm, I'm not going to get gory with that, even though we did have a death in the family that we couldn't afford, you know, we couldn't go because we can get afford to get sick. But I think it's just like the simplest things, like having a cup of coffee, strolling down with the baby, going to the park, smelling nature, like is those simple pleasures and redefining that if you're not happy about something, you need to do something about it within you. And that's what comes with redefining. It's like, looking life in a different way that it's just you in life like everybody else they're gonna do their own thing but you have to be happy and I think I'm going to take that for not only my volunteers or the communities that I help but really making them the center of things because we, we we live in a world again that sometimes it's selfishness to have self-care and do all these things but it's really not we should be doing that you know so yeah I think it's that definitely and one big talk question I like to ask, and you kind of addressed it in the Google form, is what does the world need more of? And I know you're talking about how, like, why is TikTok going viral but not helping people? And I totally agree with you on that. So I'd love to hear more of your thoughts about that. Claro que sí, girl. Claro que sí. I'm going to speak Spanish, English, all the languages I know, because helping people is so important. It's not a cliche. I wish and I hope that helping people could be as popular as TikTok, as Instagram, as all these different things. Um, you know, the lives that not only change, you change, but also yourself, because now you're coming out of your everyday norm and we don't highlight it as much. I mean, there's so many organizations and there's so many people. And that's why we wanted to do peer to peer, because it's the simplest things like, I'll give you an example, somebody in our community they their husband lost their job she hasn't worked in like years she doesn't really know a computer she lives in the midwest and we got her a volunteer to just spend 30 minutes of their time helping her look for a job helping her write her resume guess what she landed a job her first online job she's never even done but it's something basic that she could do and she felt empowered and it didn't matter about and it was just it didn't matter how much it was it didn't matter about that it was just that time and um I am so passionate about helping people because I tell people my story that I'm here on this earth because of people, because of friends and family. I have, I've had, um, you know, uh, health related issues in the past. And if my friends and family weren't there, I wouldn't be here because it's them to uplift you. It's them to encourage you, to inspire you, to motivate you, to, you know, to show you life through another set of eyes. And yeah, I really wish that helping people and volunteering could be as popular as TikTok girl. We'll do some TikTok stuff and volunteer while we're doing it. We'll do whatever we do. But I just feel like that. I feel like we need a highlight. Like, like, I love pop culture. I love all the, even this, what you're doing, conversations, you know, like people don't have that no more. They're like, how's the weather? Don't ask me about the weather again, you know, like, you know, or even in my community, you know, Hispanic and Latino community, we, we, it's like sometimes because of generational, you know, things, it's like they don't talk about certain things. It's like uncomfortable. It's, it's not, you don't talk those things. You don't speak it, you know? And so, so I love what you're doing, one. And two, it's all a part of helping, you know? If you can help someone or you know somebody that knows somebody, you can say, hey, you know, I know this person. Let's connect. How can I help you? But deeply. And so I'm super passionate about helping people. Um, super, super passionate. It doesn't even have to be physical sometimes. It could just be listening. It could be just uh, connecting them with someone. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, can, I could talk all day about it. <laughs> well, we need more people like you in the world. That's for sure. <laughs> Less like TikTok popping around little girls. Oh. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but no, I, I know. Yeah, I wish we could make it. Yeah, maybe there's a way we can brainstorm to make it more viral to help people. Um, or yeah, do because, if you, because if you think about it, think about the generations, right? Their vocabulary is limited by based on certain, certain aspects of what their surroundings are. So if you're reading about Madagascar, you're reading about a place in India, or and, you know, you're reading about cultures, you understand, you're helping other people and you're learning about those things, you're like, wow, I see how the world is working. But if you're so limited in your vocabulary and, your, and the things that you're doing, you're not really experiencing life. You're, you're just not. And then you, under, then you wonder what are the opportunities for you, you know? And I don't, I don't, you know, like you said, I don't knock them, everybody to each his own. I just want to encourage people. Um, and that's why the, I'm getting a lot of young people and sorry, the airplane, of course, this is live. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm getting a lot of young people that want to volunteer in the community and they're telling me, yeah, I need to get hours, but then I have them emailing me back and they're like, I really enjoy this. Like after I get my hours, can I still do this? I'm like, yeah, they, they didn't know what they can offer the world, you know? So yeah. Awesome. 
Well, my final big talk question for you okay. is how will you move forward from this time? What's next? So what's next? That's a great question because there's still so much up in the air, but I think if we keep, if I keep in my focus on awareness and humanity and people first, I think that everything will come its way. I think that things are going to not get normal, but we're going to live through how, how to live with Corona um, or how to deal with a future pandemic. Um, reevaluate our beliefs, our belief systems, and what we believe in and learning new things. So I think it's me, especially as an Afro-Latina, I'm constantly learning, but I'm also constantly listening because I don't know everything. And that is what I want to do in the future. I want to continue to listen so that I can impact other people through social good and through, you know, through helping. <laughs> yeah. Love that. Amazing. Um, well, do you have anything else to add at all? Um, I don't have anything, but if you want to volunteer, deargotterweedarea.com, get involved. You can actually volunteer from home. You know, my niece is over and she started drawing to the elderly, like cards for the elderly. Amazing. Read with me. There's kids that you can help them read from home because they're, they, have, they might have dyslexia or whatever and they need that help. I mean, there's little things that takes an hour of your time and you never know that you're actually gaining because the last thing I want to say is that time is the most valuable currency in this world. It's not money. Because if you think about it, you think about a corona, you can have all the money in the world, but you can't come up with a coronavirus, um, the, 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 the injection, you can't come up with that. <laughs> you, you think you can, but you can't. But time is what you, you can, um, it's the most valuable. You can't get it back. You can't. So I want to thank you again for having me on Big Talk. And um, yeah, no, keep having these conversations. I love what you're doing. And, and you're young. I mean, you seem young or probably your college and it's looking fierce. But <laughs> no, but keep having that because we need these conversations. We need these conversations for all generations, not just, you know, younger or an older. We just, we need, we need them. Got to keep talking. <laughs> Agreed. It all starts with a conversation. Yes, it does. But thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. It was so great meeting you. Um, have a great rest of your day and good luck with your baby also. Thank you. Have a good one. <laughs> we'll talk soon. Bye. Bye.